So I titled today's message, A Spectacular Ministry. A Spectacular Ministry. And I want to talk, I mean, this will probably be, you know, a, a two-parter, but just a little bit um, with the time that we have left, talk a little bit about how do we, how do we go about achieving a spectacular ministry? And, you know, I, I believe in, in my heart of hearts that Action in Christ International is what I would consider a spectacular ministry. And it's interesting because if you use the word a spectacular ministry, you would think that it means that it's because you have a lot of people in the ministry. Uh, that is not true. And we're going to talk about that and see what Paul has to say, say about it. And we're going to be looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we're going to be looking at verses 11 uh, through 21. We'll do a couple of verses today. But I also want you to think of a ministry as, as individual ministries. You know, how you can have, possess a spectacular ministry of your own in the way you live your life, in the way you make God tangible to others, in, 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 in the way that you uh, uh, live out the gospel. Um, and and touch the lives that you encounter on a daily basis. So don't forget about that ministry. Don't forget about that ministry. And that includes your families, by the way. When we talk about touching the lives of others, we're, we're including your families. Um, when we look at um, verse 11, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 11, it says, Paul says, because we understand, listen to this carefully, these words, because we understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord, we work hard to persuade others. Now, many people, as you know, have taken words like this and they've run with it. And all of a sudden they feel that they have to, it's their job to convert everyone to Christianity. Not so, not so. They think that being scared of God and that somehow God is gonna strike you down if you don't do X, Y, Z, that that is part of life. Not so, not so. What Paul is trying to communicate and what we've always communicated at Action in Christ International and what I personally communicate is that having appreciation for God, respecting God in the form of appreciating God, the creator of the universe and everything within it that we as Christians appreciate Christ Jesus for bringing the message, clarifying the message, uh, making it, um, I don't like to use the word easier to follow, but definitely, um, I just, again, I'm gonna use the word making it, making it clear making the message, making the, uh, the, uh, the word of God uh, clear to us. I know that for me, through Christ Jesus, it is clear what I, what I am supposed to do or supposed to be doing. What I should be working on is what I'm trying to say. Because we understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord. There is an expectation of us, according to scripture. For us Christians, there is an expectation of us because of Christ Jesus and through Christ Jesus. And it continues, it says, God knows we are sincere. I hope you know this too. Well, sincerity is really important. It's one of the major things, aside from 
uh, uh, decency nowadays in, in the world that we're living in today. Uh, sincerity is one of the things that's really lack, you know, lacking in, 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 in our society. Decency, sincerity. And I think that in building a ministry or being part of a ministry, sincerity is very important. Are you a sincere person? Are you doing things with some uh, dark ulterior motive? Do you have some sort of hidden agenda? Or are you a part of a ministry and are you working on your own personal ministry uh, because of your appreciation and love for God? Because you are interested in using your mind, your heart, your body, your circumstances to make God tangible to everyone else around you. See where we're getting with this? Let's talk about ministry for real. Let's not look at ministry as to what we see on television because they're a mess. They are a mess. There are so many hidden agendas and so many ulterior motives and so many, look at me, look at me, look at how I do things, you know, come to our church because that's where you're going to find salvation and da, 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 da. Guys, it's a mess. Can we get back to what real ministry is about? Can we get back to what the master taught us in his very short ministry here on earth? Because that's not what we're seeing on social media. Is it? It's not what we're seeing. We're not seeing Jesus on television, on YouTube. And I'm not talking about in general. I'm talking about these specific, these, these incredible, incredible, gigantic ministries. It's not what we're seeing. But they're doing it in the name of God. They are hiding behind the name of Jesus. But what goes into a real ministry? What about love? What about attention? What about the shepherd that smells like it's sheep? Whatever happened to that? Whatever happened to leaders that are reachable, that are touchable? Whatever happened to that? We've lost sincerity in ministry. We are lacking in terms of our fearful responsibility to the Lord. It continues in verse 12. Are we, con are we commending ourselves to you again? No. We are giving you a reason to be proud of us so you can answer those who brag about having spectacular ministries. So here, when it talks about spectacular ministries, it is talking about these people who are boasting about these great giant ministries back then. Guys, we're talking about back then. Don't, do not get caught up in the hype thinking that this is something that happens now. This was happening back then. But I don't want to throw the word, the words spectacular ministry away. I want to show you what a real spectacular ministry looks like. It is a ministry full of sincerity, of compassion, of love, of care of humility, of wanting to be there for one another, of building ourselves up so that we can make God tangible through our actions, less words, more action to those around us. What makes us different? And can everyone see the difference? Can, can the people around you see what God has done for you internally? 
Are you bragging for the sake of bragging? Or are you trying to live out the gospel so that you are setting the example for others through your actions? Do actions speak louder than words? Absolutely. 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 <laughs> Paul says in verse 13, he started off by saying, if it seems we are crazy, <laughs> what was so crazy about Paul and his, and his crew? Nothing. The fact that they were trying to live out the gospel. See, what happens is people will take this line, right? I've seen it. Oh, I've seen it. I've seen it. They will take a line like, oh, they think I'm crazy, but then they act crazy. We used to have people, even in our church, back in the days, 40-something years ago, they would just act crazy, period. And they were like, well, if people don't like that, I like crazy, you know, they're like real over, overly fundamental, overly fanatic, over-spiritualizing everything. That's not what this is talking about. That's not what this is about. This is about Paul telling you that even in taking the interpretation of Torah, taking the interpretation of, the, of what the prophets said, Jesus took that and interpreted it in a way where we can now act on it. And simply in acting in love made them look crazy. The fact that all of a sudden they were following an interpretation of the Hebrew Bible, which, which was made for all creation, that made them crazy. Hey guys, they never stopped being Jews. They didn't become Christians, but they were putting forth a teaching that made God tangible to those who heard this message or saw the message in action. Does that make sense? That is what made other people say, well, hey, be careful with those people because they're not all there. It wasn't that they were acting nutty. Like so many do. He continues, if it seems that we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. The point of your life is to bring glory to God, to bring glory to the one who you believe created you. And how do you do that? Well, the man of God, Jesus of Nazareth, laid it out for you. Put together a beautiful blueprint as to how you bring honor to God through how you live your life, through how you engage your own personal ministry, spectacular ministry, to how you are part of other ministries, other spectacular ministries. Guys, if you are part of a ministry or if your individual ministry is all about you or all about that particular house of worship or place of worship, whatever you wanna call it, then it has nothing to do with Jesus. You've, 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 <laughs> you, you missed the mark. You're living in sin. You missed the mark. If your individual ministry, if, 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 if the ministry you belong to is using the blueprint put forth by Christ Jesus in which it impacts those outside of the four walls, on a daily basis, you're impacting those you come in contact with 
then you have what we call a Christ-centered ministry, which I like to call a spectacular ministry. It says, it says in verse 14, it says, either way, Christ's, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, <laughs> I know it's funny because, you know, I, I say these things and I still have people out there that say, oh, he just made that up. <laughs> it just tells me how much people actually study scripture. Like they, make, they think that I'm making stuff up when it's in scripture. He died for all. He didn't die for a particular group of people. He died for all. It says in 15, he died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. <laughs> I'm sorry that I laugh. I laugh because, you know, this is kind of like really basic stuff that that you look at all these uh, so-called gigantic ministries and they're missing the mark. It's not just for those that that give you money. <laughs> it's not just for those who attend your place of worship. It's not for those who just pray the way you pray or, or speak in tongues the way you speak in tongues. And for some reason, everybody uses the same tongues. It, it, it's for everybody. It's for God's creation because God loves his creation. He loves all of it. I just happen to have found my way through the teachings of one man of God, not me, not those other the true man of God, Christ Jesus. That is the message that worked for me. What message works for you? I'll tell you one thing. Whatever the message is, if it ends in the fact that you, that you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your strength and with all your mind, and it ends with... Uh, 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 loving your neighbor as yourself, hmm? taking care of the widows and the orphans, clothing those that don't have clothing and giving drink to those who are thirsty and giving food to those who are hungry and, 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 and always taking care of the poor and the surgeoners. If it ends with that, you are doing the work of God. You are doing the work that was uh, put forth by Jesus of Nazareth. If you are still only living for yourself, as opposed to making you part of the universe, making yourself part of your community, making yourself part of your families. It says here, no longer living for yourself, then you're on the right track. You are a spectacular ministry. You have the potential to be part of a spectacular ministry, not just Action in Christ. There are a number of spectacular ministries out there. And then there are a lot of not so spectacular ministries out there. I'll finish with this, verse 16 and 17. He says, so we have stopped evaluating others. Listen to this. <laughs> God help me. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. <laughs> like that. Watch, everybody, oh, he made that up. Oh, he made that up. Oh, he, that guy's not spiritual at all. <laughs> guys, just stick to the, can you stick to the script, man? Just stick to the script. Stop trying to make things up. Stop trying to take it to some other level because you're somehow the man of God or you're the woman of God or... So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view, how differently we know him now. 
How do you know Christ? That's the real question you have to ask yourself. Do you, do you know Christ from a limited point of view, a limited perspective, or do you know God, do you know Christ Jesus from an unlimited perspective? Hmm. Verse 17, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. Whatever changes happen on the inside must show themselves on the outside or it's not happening. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ, so, so, so everybody took that and ran and said, well, you have to be this. You're going to have to be a Christian. Remember that when it mentions Christ, the chosen one, we're talking about a way. That's why it was called. We were, we were called back in the days, right, during Paul's time, followers of the way. <laughs> followers of the way. If the interpretation, if you are following the interpretation or the blueprint left, by the man of God, Jesus of Nazareth, right? Because how many people are crying out, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, and they're so far from the message of Jesus Christ. Why? Why would scripture says? Why would scripture say? Now, let, 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 let's take it to the basics, all right? I'll finish with this. We, we Christians believe that Jesus is what? Lord. Jesus is Lord. Yes or no? Jesus is Lord. But the Bible says not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Wow. Not everyone who says, Jesus, Jesus, will enter the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we're seeing today. Because it's not about the name. It is more, there is more to a name. I tried to tell you guys, but most of you think, whoa, he's lost it. Because you, because if it does, if the name does not encompass the the message, the teachings, the way, then it's just the name. It's just Tito from 141st Street. It's just Jesus from up up the street. It's not Jesus, the man of God, Jesus, the chosen one from Nazareth. It's too much. It's too much. I'm going to leave it there. It's too much. It's too much. You guys got that, though, the whole thing like the eyes like this. It's too much. But I hope you let it sink in. I hope you think about it today. Take a walk. Be careful. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be. But take a walk and, and, and let it sink in before you just before you just put it in the garbage. Let these words sink in. Go back to 2 Corinthians. Go back to the Sermon on the Mount. Go back to the longest conversation that Jesus ever had with the woman by the well. Go back to the shortest conversation, which is Jesus with the centurion. And tell me what you think. Tell me what you think. Are you up for a spectacular ministry? Amen? I hope, I hope this helps. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This message, as well as other messages, can be found on our YouTube channel, Rev. Dr. Marcos Miranda. We can be reached at actioninchrist.gmail.com. And uh, for more information or to donate, you can go to actioninchrist.com. 
With that said, may God bless you. May God keep you. Please go ahead and show each other the sign of peace.